You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. We have with us today Tosca Lee, who has a, a book that's up for uh, High Plains Book Fest uh, Award. It's called The Line in Between. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but maybe first uh, you could tell us a little about yourself. All right. Well, hello, and thanks for having me today. I live in Nebraska. I'm married to a farmer, and so it is harvest season. It's just barely begun, but we've gotten rained out this week, so that means that I've been able to have a little bit of time with my husband this week, so I'm really happy about that. Um, it's a complete green acre situation because I was a city girl before this, so um, I sound like I know what I'm talking about, and I don't. <laughs> Um, and so I grew up in Nebraska, and uh, I was born in Virginia, but I grew up here because my dad was a professor at the university. And I went away for college and came back, and this is where I live. Um, before I married my husband, I was living in Lincoln, and now we live south of Fremont, Nebraska. And when I married my husband, I also became an instant mom to four kids. So I have now three teenagers still at home, all boys. So during the pandemic, uh, they've been cooped up at home. Um, they are now back in school though. So, so that's a little bit about our life. Um, I share it on social media. We have a giant 150 pound German shepherd named Timber and he's, he's on social media a lot. And we also have a rotund uh, old black Labrador named Charlie. And so we are out on the farm on a rainy day today. So that's a little bit about me. Well, I, I think you're you're being modest. Um, <laughs> I, I urge anyone to look you up on Wikipedia. Oh, uh, and find out a little bit more more about your uh, career. about my CD past. <laughs> yeah, your CD past at Oxford studying economics and uh, <laughs> you know, all this other kind of stuff. So, uh, oh, yes. Uh, so. You have this book, uh, The Line Between. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, uh, The Line Between is my, I believe, 11th novel. It is the first novel that I've uh, written that I was able to actually place a big chunk of here in Nebraska where I live. Um, I've written a lot of uh, historical, biblical historical, and some suspense and other things that I couldn't set here because of the setting of the story. Um, so this was really exciting for me to be able to, to bring it to the Midwest. Um, so the line between is uh, what well, came about in a really interesting way. I went to New York City to meet with my, my publisher at Simon & Schuster, and we were talking about what happens next. And I had just had a duology out called The Progeny Duology. So The, the Progeny is the first book and Firstborn is the second. And uh, I took a list of favorite ideas with me. And one of the ideas was a young woman who has just left a cult and is trying to start over in the outside world. And the other idea I had just stumbled across while reading the news. And I had seen this news article about a reindeer carcass that thawed in the melting permafrost in Siberia. And it happened to be infected with anthrax. And it made an entire nearby village sick. And a young boy died. And I remember thinking, this is terrifying and fascinating. And all these other articles that were related cropped up. And so I started reading more about it about how scientists are wary um, at best and you know, concerned or even a little frightened maybe at worst about other things that could come out of the melting permafrost as far as diseases, microbes, bacteria, things like that. So I took this article as well and I, I remember I was in this meeting and my publisher was like, well I like, you know, there were other ideas too, there were like 10. But he said, I like this one and this one, and I think you should put them together. And I remember thinking he was on something because I, I, I just didn't see how that was going to work. <laughs> but, you know, good little writing soldier that I am, I thought, okay, well, I'll give it a go. And I, I really um, have thanked him over and over now many times because 
um, the story that came out of it uh, seems to have worked really well. And the story is this. It's a young woman named Winter Roth, and she's named after my stepdaughter, Winter. Um, Winter Roth is 22, and she's just been kicked out of the doomsday cult um, on the American prairie that she grew up in. And as she, she has kicked out, a pandemic has begun sweeping across the, the US. And as it picks up speed and becomes worse and worse, uh, it seems a lot like the apocalypse that Winter has been taught all her life is coming. And so it's an adventure story. It's a story where she is um, called to action to help uh, get a set of medical samples uh, to a lab in Colorado. That's Charlie walking across the floor right now. <laughs> Charlie's old and she moves very slow. <laughs> so, um, so that's the story. And the sequel is called Single Light. And um, the majority of that book takes place here in Nebraska. So. And it is a pandemic story that came out last year. So this year has been very strange. Exactly. Yes. It's, you know, you, uh, I'm trying to remember when uh, uh, the line between came out. If, was it in August, actually? Um, January of last year. And then the sequel yeah. came out in September, September of last year, just a few months before the COVID um, pandemic started. So. Yeah, it seems a little prescient, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, this but, has been a very surreal year for sure. I'll bet for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, certainly the, I, I was just quickly checking before we uh, started this interview, to quickly checking uh, in scholarly sources uh, and scientific sources about this whole idea that uh, some ancient virus or microbe could emerge from permafrost that we haven't seen in 30,000 years or more. And suddenly, um, here we are, you know, mm -hmm. new pandemic. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and scientists are taking this very seriously. There are a lot of scholarly articles about this, quite mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well. <laughs> So okay. that's uplifting. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Are you being careful in this pandemic? Are you, uh, you know? We're being careful. You know, we live on the farm, so we're already socially distanced just by, by location and nature. And I work at home and my husband works outside. So, you know, on a normal day, it doesn't look any different for us. It's when we go into town. Or, you know, I canceled an entire calendar's worth of events and speaking engagements and things. And so suddenly, um, you know, my calendar really freed up. So, well, of course, that's why we're doing this. Online. And here we are. <laughs> yes. uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, would, we would love to meet you in person, perhaps, uh, you know, next time you happen to be in Billings. Well, can... and I would love to get to Montana. I truly miss traveling that I have really, really missed traveling this year a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who's the audience for this book? Hmm. So pretty much anybody who loves a fast paced adventure, um, anybody, um, you know, the main character is, is female, but I have a lot of male readers. Um, the main character is 22, but I also have a lot of readers who enjoy young adult fiction who also like to read it because she's quite young. Um, and she also, you know, in many ways, because of her isolation growing up, um, she's very naive about a lot of things in the world. She has to relearn how to, you know, do certain things like work a TV or use a cell phone or things like that. And so um, in a way, it's kind of a coming of age story, even though she's already 22 and considered an adult. So I'd say, um, anybody interested in that? Anybody interested in pandemic stories? And, you know, ac actually, there's a lot of people, maybe not as much now, but in the past, historically, there's a wide audience of people who have enjoyed pandemic stories or disaster stories. Um, and I, I always say, I think the reason for that is because um, in the noise of our normal lives, um, reading a story like that just boils all that noise down and takes it out. And the goal is very simple. It's just survival. And so you have that sheer escapism. Um, and the question of, you know, would I be resourceful enough to make it or would I make it? 
So people interested in that. And I'm surprised at the number of people who, like me, have been fascinated by cults. Lots of people are interested in cults. And so um, I'd say anybody interested in those things or who just wants to stay up late reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> I aim to keep readers up late. That's my whole aim in writing every single thriller I do. So, Or, or be kept awake because they just finished reading and they're going, ah. Yes. I <laughs> Every time I hear that, I put a little notch in my secret, you know, mental belt. You know? <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for uh, uh, taking the time to be with us today. I really, uh, really absolutely. And uh, absolutely, we we do hope to meet you in person one day. So, I I would love to get up to your beautiful state. So one of these days, I hope so. Well, so long. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody loves the dogs. <laughs> Do you have one nearby? Can we see one? Um, oh, yeah. Hold on one second. Let me see if I, I think this camera. Oh, yeah. They're sitting here crashed out on this rainy day. Oh, yeah. Look at there. <laughs> There's Timber. Timber. Hey, Timber. Kitty, 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 kitty. Oh. oh. He thinks his name is Kitty, kitty. <laughs> and there. Hi, Charlie. Oh, Hi, yeah. Charlie. There, it's a rainy, lazy timber. Yeah, hey. a beauty. Timber. It's terrific. Hey, hi, there you are. Oh, yeah, just sleeping. Oh, away. there you are. <laughs> if you go to my, um, if you go to my Facebook page, I've got a series I started where we're trying to teach them to count. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's a, it's a series of hilarious fails, but um, yeah. Yeah. If oh, you're a dog, dog person. <laughs> a dog, dog always fun. Yeah, it's great. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.